From Hollywood, it's time now for Bob Bailey as... Johnny Dollar. Yeah, remember me, sweetheart? Johnny, I didn't I'm the guy you were making the big pitch for. Dancing, moonlight on the beach, the complete routine. Oh, I gotta hand it to you, baby. That was real nice acting. No, it wasn't acting, Johnny. I meant it, all of it. Oh, sure, Gloria, sure. That's why I catch you here and searching my room. That's all part of the big romance, huh? I can explain. And that's just what you're gonna do. Hey, look, Gloria, one guy has already wound up dead on this deal. I've got a strong hunch I'm number two man on the list. And this baby I do not want. Tonight and every weekday night, Bob Bailey and the transcribed adventures of the man with the action-packed expense account, America's fabulous freelance insurance investigator... Yours truly, Johnny Dollar. Santo Tomas, Mexico. Expense account submitted by Special Investigator Johnny Dollar. To the Home Office, Northeastern Fidelity and Ponding, Hartford, Connecticut. The following is an account of additional expenses during my investigation of the Alvin Summers embezzlement of $75,000. Item 9, $17.60. Business entertainment for one Gloria Harris. Believe it or not, I wasn't going to put that item on the account because I figured it might just possibly be a private romance. But when I caught Gloria searching my hotel room, I knew she tied into the deal somehow. That she could give me information on Summer's whereabouts. Johnny, please. Oh, no, you're not leaving, Gloria, not yet. I'm not trying to get away. I... Oh, it's the use. You'd never believe me. Why should I? You lied to me. I lied to you once. Only once. When I told you I'm here on a vacation. I'm not. Surprise. The truth is I'm stranded down here. Stranded? Oh, sure. That's why you're staying at the Playa del Mar, the most expensive hotel in town. I don't mean no money. I mean no passport. Oh. It's true. You got a cigarette, Johnny? Yeah, here. Thanks. Yeah. I've been stuck in this ratty town for four months now. Hoping every day that I could figure out some way or find somebody to help me get back to the States. How come you picked this town? Assuming I believe you. Because I heard that fugitives from the States sometimes came here. I've been drifting around for a year from place to place. I guess I thought my luck had changed here. Well, it hasn't. How'd you lose your passport in the first place? I'll tell you if you really want to know, Johnny. Personally, I'd rather skip it. It's a long story, and not a very pretty one. And it's all in the past. Let's just say I've made a mistake about a guy. Okay, Gloria, okay. But there's one little item you haven't told me. Why you were searching my room just now. Because I was trying to find out something about you, Johnny. The reason why you're down here. Why? So maybe I could make a deal with you. Deal? You help me get a passport. And I'll help you. How can you help me? You're looking for Alvin Summers, aren't you? Oh, am I? Six months ago, he embezzled $75,000 up in the States and took off. Go on. You came down here to find him. You're an insurance investigator. Keep talking. That's all. That's it. Now maybe you wouldn't mind telling me how you know all of... Oh, sure. That report in my suitcase. In the picture. Alvin Summers, I know him. I can help you, Johnny. Where is he? First, I've got to know if you'll help me. The passport? The passport. Well, what do you expect me to do about that? In your business, Johnny, you must meet a lot of people, all kinds. Maybe one of them has an extra passport or two for a price, maybe. All right, I'll see what I can do. Is that the best you can say? That's the best. Take it or leave it. All right, I'll take it. I haven't any choice. Now, about Alvin Summers. I'll take you there, to Summers Place. Where is it? Down the beach, about a mile below town. Then into the jungle a little way. How come you know where it is? I met Alvin Summers a couple of months ago. Here in Santo Tomas? Yeah. I went there once for dinner. Okay, you take me there, Gloria. First, I'd better go up to the hotel and change. The country's pretty rough on clothes. Okay, I'll meet you at your hotel in half an hour. Johnny. Mm. I only lied to you about one thing. The reason I was down here. The rest of it I meant. Last night... On the terrace and on the beach. I meant all of it. Really, Johnny. And I mean this. You know, I'm kind of glad you told me that. 
See you in half an hour. I stayed there a while after she left, going over the case in my mind. Maybe she was telling me the truth. But whether she was or not, I had to follow up any lead I could find, because I was getting nowhere the way things were. Half an hour later, as I was starting out of my room to go pick her up, my phone rang. It was a long-distance call from the States. Fred Wilkins at Northeastern Fidelity, Johnny. Hi, Fred. Well, how's the fishing down there? Fishing? A matter of fact, it hasn't been so good so far, Fred. Ah, uh-huh, that's too bad, but I'll bet the swimming is all right, huh? Whoa there, what's eating you? I didn't send you down there for a vacation. Well, you got a great sense of humor. You should see this place vacation. Then what have you been doing down there? Well, what do you think I've been doing? I've been looking for whoever it was that telephoned you and said he had information on Alvin Summers. You couldn't have been looking very hard. He called me again this morning. He what? That's right. He wondered if I'd send anyone down there yet. Hey, look, Fred, this guy is not easy to find, believe me. And I think I know why. Obviously, somebody doesn't want him to talk, and that somebody could be Alvin Summers, about one jump behind him. Summers? You, you think he's around there? Could be. I'm leaving right now to find out. I've got a lead on where he lives. Uh, there's somebody at the door. I'll call you when I get anything. Do that. Brother, fishing. Oh, Lieutenant Gomez. Uh, well, look, I'm in sort of a hurry right now. Well, this will not take long. Okay. What is it, Lieutenant? Early this morning, one of my men found Senor Kraus in the alley. How is he feeling? He had been badly beaten. He would not tell us anything, but it was fairly obvious who had done this to him. So? So, the last time we talked, Senor Dollar, I warned you not to attempt to take the law into your own hands. Now listen, Gomez, if you think I want to take a pistol whipping like he gave me and not do anything about do it, you Do gotta... not misunderstand. I care nothing about Kraus personally or what happens to him. I'm thinking about something more important. For instance? You are looking for Alvin Summers, a man who quite obviously does not want to be found. So? So when you find him, it is quite possible that there will be trouble. Granted. But let's face a few facts, Lieutenant. You and your boys can't help me. You're in charge of the Santa Tomas Police Force, all two men. And I imagine you've got a few other things on your mind besides an ambassador from the States and an insurance investigator. That may well be So that means I've got to do it on my own. Very well, Senor Dollar. This morning I attended the funeral of Benito Inscanza, who was killed because he had information about Alvin Summers. If you find Summers and take the law into your own hands again, I fear I may have to attend another funeral. Yours. That's what I liked about Gomez. He was the cheerful type. Well, I picked up Gloria at her hotel and we headed for Summers' place. We walked down the beach about a mile below town. The beach kept narrowing as the jungle crowded closer and closer to the water. This place is in from the beach a ways. There's a little path pretty soon that leads in. You could walk right by it and never see it. Here it is. And that's just what we'll do. Hmm? Walk right by it. I don't want to lead anyone else here. There's nobody else on the beach. I'm not talking about the beach. That's a regular jungle in there. Twenty people could be watching us, so we'd never see them. Oh, I guess so. Okay. Now we'll go in here, then work our way back to the path. Brother, this is pretty thick in here. Yeah. Oh, you're walking through thick brush like this. You always feel like somebody's watching you. Imagination gets pretty strong sometimes. I think it's a little more than imagination. What do you mean? Stop a minute. Listen. I don't hear Shh. him. Johnny. Yeah, somebody's tailing us again. Look, keep moving straight ahead. I'm going to circle and see if I can intercept him. All right, but be careful. Gloria moved on, and I started circling to the right. Every few seconds, I'd stop and listen. Yeah, he was still there. I pegged the direction of the sound and started edging toward it slowly. Then my foot caught on a bar. I scrambled to my feet and kept going in the same direction. There was a small clearing ahead. I reached it, stopped, and listened. Nothing. Whoever I was chasing seemed to know the country better than I did. He disappeared. I caught up with Gloria a couple of hundred yards farther along the trail. Any luck, Johnny? No. Whoever it is is pretty good at keeping out of sight. Are you sure it was a person? Might have been some kind of animal. Yeah, maybe. You can see a corner of Alvin Summers' hut from here. Past that big tree. Yeah, come on. And stay behind me. All right. If there's any trouble... You think there will be? Look. 
A guy who's this careful about hiding doesn't usually welcome visitors. Quiet now. No sign of life. Keep back against the wall. I'm going to open the door. Hmm. Okay, Gloria. Nobody home, huh? Nobody home. Well, he seems to have a pretty comfortable place here. You like to live in jungles. Hmm. Yeah. What? Looks like he hasn't been around for several days. Oh? The food in these cupboards, pretty moldy. Yeah, I guess they've cleared out. They? Uh-huh. He and whoever was here with him. What makes you think someone was? For one thing, two sets of dirty dishes over there. Maybe he just wasn't neat. He'd have to have been awfully neat to use two toothbrushes and two kinds of toothpaste, and two people have been eating at this table. See the crumbs? Maybe there's something around here that could give you a clue to where he might be now. Maybe. If he's still alive. What do you mean? You think he isn't? Oh, I don't know. But if somebody else was living here, too, it could mean he had a partner in this deal. And it's a funny thing about that kind of playmates. Sooner or later, they start quarreling about who's going to hold the marbles. $75,000 worth in this case. Johnny, if he is dead, that leaves you nowhere. Maybe not. Hey, listen. What? Yeah. Sounds like our shadow is somewhere outside. Keep talking, Gloria. Normal tone. I'm going out the back way and see if I can spot him. Why don't you look around the hut, Johnny? Gloria kept up a line of patter while I slipped out the back door and into the brush. I listened. Do you want me to do anything? Nothing but the sound of Gloria's voice. He had to be somewhere near. But where? I worked my way around to the front of the cabin, still under cover. No sign. I kept on around the other side. Then as I started to climb over a fallen tree trunk, I saw a shadow out of the corner of my eye. Hold it. Don't turn around. The voice was behind me. I could see the rest of the shadow now, a hand with a gun. And I knew it was zeroed in on my backbone. I said, hold it. I'm holding. Drop your gun. Kick it backwards, quick. Hey, look, whoever you are... Don't turn around. Okay. And don't try to move. Mind telling me... Keep your eyes straight ahead. Any move, any move at all, it'll be your last. be the final exciting episode in our story of the Alvin Summers matter tomorrow. Yes, tomorrow, how to find out what you've been looking for the hard way. Join us, won't you? Yours truly, Johnny Dollar. Yours truly, Johnny Dollar, starring Bob Bailey, is transcribed in Hollywood. Written by Robert Reif, it is produced and directed by Jack Johnstone. Be sure to join us tomorrow night, same time and station, for the next exciting episode of Yours Truly, Johnny Dollar, Roy Rowan speaking.